There's no time to waste. There's no time at all.
every picture tells a story. Sometimes we don't like the ending. Sometimes we don't understand it. Quite enough of that, I think. Enough preliminaries. Here's the performance you've been waiting for. Proves I am without prejudice and have a fine sense of humor. Sword and crown are worthless here. I invite everyone to dance. Laborers, lawyers, church and gown all make their little front. This life is full of random deaths and heaps of grief and shame. So few are soothed by accident, you want someone to blame. Fire, plague, and strange disease. Drowned, murdered, or if you please. A long fall down the basement stairs. None are expected. No one cares. I often must work very hard. Sweat running down my skin. After the dance, I then must rest. And the eating can begin. Time to eat. Death is the ultimate equalizer. All have the right to be eaten. <laughs> Get a knife, Frigel. Don't push. All will be served. So to speak. Wicked thing. Feasting while Wonderland is destroyed. I'm not the enemy you seek, Alice. I tried to hide this bit of Wonderland from that beast. Appeasement's never clean. We must all play our assigned roles. Are you a pawn or a queen? An idiot or a brat just fool? However this turns out, consider the prospect that you've been misled, Alice. Let us... By whom? No! Who set that bloody train in motion? Where has it come from? It arrived when you arrived, and it's more horrible even than you could currently imagine! The death of a dream! Caterpillar may know how! What? The blood in my mouth tastes like bile. Where's the brute that hit me, Nanny? Nasty prats out cold. Not dead and more's the pity. What did he want? What they all want. Money he didn't earn. What were you thinking, butting into that mess? You could have been killed. Nanny, my mind's in pieces. I still have terrible visions and I need to know. About the fire. Same as always. You need to move on, Alice. So do I. Well, at least she's not spewing that asylum nonsense. My past is dead, I killed them, I should have saved them, I should have died. Her mind was in shambles. Radcliffe thought familiar faces would bring her round. After a year, he lost interest in her inheritance, greedy sod. Still, always asking his bizarre questions. Heavy dose of madness, I'd say, but honesty is never the best policy in this life. When she wasn't comatose, she gaped. Eyes like pinwheels, drooled, and occasionally squeaked. 
I never uttered a sensible sound. And like the child she was, she kept her secrets close. Gone off some lurkers, common as cockroaches. And those poor tykes are food for perverts, like the blameless ants that wasps consume or spiders feeble prey. You visited my room at Rutledge. What you were you- call that? Radcliffe paid me for a bit. A woman alone sometimes does what she doesn't particularly feel like doing. As you know. Nurse Whitless said you'd fallen on hard times. I'm no drunk like her. I'm hurting no one. Hookin's not a bad life. Except for the pimps. She also said you might have my rabbit. Please, Nanny, talk about the damn fire. Never seems to help. Look, Alice, I can't give you what I don't have. Radcliffe wrote the inquest report. I'll take you to him. Besides, he's got your damn rabbit. You should remember that. All right, but Mr. Radcliffe's useless. <sighs> Don't I know it?